You make me feel so Hi, my name is Helen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to analyze the symbolism behind the costume design in Romeo and Juliet's 1996 film by Baz Luhrmann. There are many films out there already interpreting the story of Romeo and Juliet, but Baz Luhrmann's adaptation of Romeo and Juliet has to be my favorite by far. And this is mainly because of the costume design, but also the cinematography, the acting, the cast, everything about the film is just so beautifully done in my opinion. I will only be analyzing certain scenes because this movie has so much symbolism in just the costumes alone that if I dive into the overall symbolism in this movie, this video would just be way too long. So let's get right into it. So for a bit of background, the film was released in 1996 by Baz Luhrmann. The costume design is by Kim Barrett and stars Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes as Romeo and Juliet. It takes place in a postmodern city called Verona Beach. It's a blend between Venice Beach and Mexico City where most of the film was shot. In this adaptation of Romeo and Juliet, the Capulets and Montagues are rival gangs. We get introduced to Juliet attending a costume ball thrown by her parents. Her father, Valencio Capulet, has arranged her marriage to the boorish Paris, a part of a strategic investment plan for his business. Romeo attends the masked ball and he and Juliet fall in love at first sight where they then later learn that their families are sworn rivals. And now onto my favorite part, the costume design. From the first minute of the film, you already see the major differences in style between the two rivaling families. First, we are introduced to the Montagues, who look like the definition of mall rats. The boys are wearing what you would consider their uniforms, bright colored Hawaiian shirts with dress pants. They wear the shirts unbuttoned, showing their chests, and they have colorful, short, edgy haircuts. I love the use of color in their style. The bright, saturated looks are perfect and eye-catching. Some may consider it tacky, but it's visually pleasing, and I think it's still a trendy look today. Like, come on, Samson's pink hair is so cool, and what many boys look like in today's current trends. The Montague boys drink smoke, crash parties, take ecstasy, and drive around in a drop-top jeep listening to punk and new wave. Their uniform almost invites conflict. Now for the Capulets. They are the complete opposite of the Montague boys when it comes to style. Although their parents have passed down their feud, the one thing they do have in common is defying the older generation. To show this generational divide, Lerman and Barrett did so in designers. The senior Montague and Capulets, he said, have more of a 1960s, 1970s Yves Saint Laurent, Jackie O look about them, whereas the younger generation has rejected that. When we were first introduced to the Capulet boys, led by Tybalt, they have on a very sleek, sexy, and tailored looks, courtesy of Dolce & Gabbana's Diffusion Ready to Wear line, DNG. The Capulets favor mostly black garments with streamlined silhouettes, but dripped in decorative embellishments. Their gun holsters used as high fashion accessories, and their tops tucked in to show off their bold belt buckles. Even one of them has a grill with sin etched into it. In the costume ball scene where they first show Romeo and Juliet meeting for the first time, Juliet is wearing a white gown with angel wings to her family's costume party, and Romeo is in a knight's costume. Dressed in the purest form of man and woman, Juliet is a heavenly angel to portray her youth and purity, and Romeo dressed as a knight in shining armor, youthful and searching for love. The exhibition of the costuming in Romeo and Juliet is shown in the ballroom scene. The contrast between the purity of the young lovers in light colors versus the guests all over the top and sinister. Each character's costume directly represents their inner motives. And foreshadowing fate. Lady Capulet, dressed as Cleopatra, a reference to her possible infidelity and anxiety about her waning beauty. Lord Capulet wears a toga, 
referencing a Roman emperor who is powerful and can do whatever he wants. We see Tybalt and his sidekicks dressed as a devil, and the Day of the Dead costumes tell you all you need to know about their representing views and his future foreshadowing his violent end. Mercutio dressed in drag to show that he is not on either side of the feud. Kim Barrett's costuming in Baz's adaptation of Romeo and Juliet is the perfect example of how costuming and fashion can be used to deepen a character, as well as add a unique aesthetic to the overall film. When we first get introduced to Romeo, we see him in a suit, button-up blazer, and dress pants, not your typical Montague attire. Lerman and Barrett did this to show that Romeo doesn't identify with his Montague name. The same goes for Juliet. While her family is always dressed lavishly, she is always dressed simple and classic to show the divide that she has with her family. To accomplish this simple and clean look, they used Prada. Specifically mid-90s Prada, when Muchi Prada was in the beginning stages of building her family's leather goods brand into a ready-to-wear empire. Having only launched menswear in 1993, Prada created Romeo's navy blue wedding suit, complete with a white button-up shirt and a pink floral tie to pay homage to his Montague heritage. It was Prada's pure and understated lines that attracted Barrett to the label's subtle elegance. Baz uses costume to show Romeo's changing path as well, like the scene where he kills Tybalt. His once clean and crisp button shirt is now stained and tarnished by the blood of his enemies. And soon after Romeo gets taken off the scene and gets banished from Verona, the priest gives him a colorful Hawaiian shirt, just like the Montague boys, symbolizing that he is indeed a Montague. We see the outfit again representing the Montague name when Romeo goes to bid Juliet farewell and sees her again for the last time. As they lay together and the scene pans out, you see Juliet once again in all white, looking holy, representing the pure Capulet girl. That's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please comment down below if you would like to see more videos like this and let me know which one was your favorite costume. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you all in the next one.